We are four weeks from election eve, and the Beltway media narratives about this election that were written six months ago are starting to expire. They have reached and passed their sell-by dates. Now, that doesn't mean that the new Beltway narratives have just been, has, have been written. It just means that the old ones are starting to stink, and it may be time to discard them. Por ejemplo, the vaunted enthusiasm gap, the idea that Democrats are going to lose real big this year because Democratic voters are not excited. Democratic voters are simply not motivated enough by this year's elections or by their own party's leaders to actually go out and vote next month, which is an okay-sounding theory. All those liberals do keep complaining that President Obama hasn't accomplished enough, right? Except anecdotes are not statistically significant. This is. Check this out. Newsweek's pollsters asked people how likely they are to actually go out and vote next month. Who says they're definitely going to turn out? That would be a Democratic lead. Yeah, Democrats beating Republicans in the definite voter category, 50 to 42, which on our bar graph helpfully looks exactly equal. That's nice. Uh, the people who say they are definitely motivated and will absolutely vote on November, sec- on November 2nd are planning right now to vote for Democrats over Republicans by eight points. Hey, how about that enthusiasm gap? The other story we keep being told about this year's elections is that it's a bad year to be a Democrat. Just generically speaking, people don't like Democrats right now, not the way they love Republicans. If you're a Democrat running for public office right now, the Beltway Common Wisdom says you're going to lose simply by virtue of your democraticness. Except, according to the folks at Gallup, the generic Republican ballot is only three points ahead of the generic Democratic ballot this week. And that's margin of error territory. Even the super conservative pollsters at Rasmussen report only giving the, the, the Rasmussen reports only give the generic Republicans a three point lead, three points. So the phrase "it's a bad year to be a Democrat" might be a fun thing to say, particularly if you're a Republican or you're rooting for the Republicans. But it does have a fact problem. So the calcified narratives about what's going to happen in the elections, this idea that Democrats aren't excited, that Democrats aren't going to turn out to vote and Republicans are, this idea that a generic Republican is a much, much, much more appealing idea to voters than a generic Democrat, these, these are getting a little threadbare. But, you know, maybe all that doesn't matter, because after all, we're now living in the era of the Citizens United, Robert's Supreme Court decision. And conservatives are doing their very best to flood the political system with totally unrestricted, anonymously donated money that will wash away every other political dynamic there is. That is certainly possible, but the facts pose a bit of a problem for that thesis, too. Have you ever seen that old liberal bumper sticker that shows the giant fish being eaten by the even gianter fish? But it turns out when you look closely, the gianter fish is actually made up of lots of tiny little fishes? As a child with a completely inexplicable, geographically inappropriate fear of piranhas, that was always a very scary bumper sticker to me. But that bumper sticker may actually be what is going on in American politics right now. Washington Post has a big piece today on who is spending what in this year's campaigns. The big picture narrative, of course, is, of course, that money's coming from outside groups on the right, with conservatives outspending their Democratic-aligned competition seven to one. But check this out. The Democratic Party raised $16 million last month. It was called a startlingly strong number by Chris Saliza in the Washington Post today. It is a new record for this election cycle. But it's not just about the Democratic Party pulling in a large amount of cash over the course of the last 30 days. The Democrats got their record money in a way that suggests the Democratic base maybe does care about these elections. More than 80 percent of it came from low dollar donors online and in the mail. That means lots of people sending in checks or donating on the interweb machine, not just a few people going to a handful of rich people fundraisers. 97% of the Democratic Party's donations were for $200 or less. Now, according to the DNC, its record $16 million haul last month came from more than a quarter of a million individual donors. Compare that to the biggest outside political fundraising group on the right, American Crossroads, the one, of course, founded and backed by Karl Rove. As we reported on this show a couple of weeks ago, in the month of August, 91% of that group's funding came from billionaires, from two guys who are billionaires and one company that's owned by a guy who's a billionaire. So 91% of their money, three guys. So yeah, the Republican Party has essentially gone away for this election cycle. It is not even remotely competitive with the Democratic Party as a party. The Democrats are blowing Republicans away with a base that is donating frequently in small amounts whenever they can. 
conservatives are trying to make up all of that lost ground with outside groups, with the help of a handful of very, very rich people. On the one side, you've got 250,000 plus people giving human-sized small donations to the Democratic Party in a single month. On the other hand, you've got three guys, three billionaires financing more than 90% of Karl Rove's outside campaign group spending. And, you know, maybe the billionaire strategy will work. Who knows? Maybe money will win the day. Maybe money will determine how everything works out. Maybe three billionaires really can decide this year's elections. Or maybe all the tiny little fishies, when they get together in the shape of a big, huge fish, will eat the big, fat billionaire fish. This year's elections are very fun so far.